Hi friends! This is Dainty Tank. Thank you for joining me. Welcome back to Fiddle 12, part 36. I am sorry. I am sorry about that cliffhanger. I am not sorry about that cliffhanger. <laughs> because we were about to get into things and I didn't want to have us have to break in the middle of getting things. But I also understand the feeling of cliffhanger. So sorry. Love you fam. You're doing awesome. Keep it up. We're so close. <laughs> so... With that, let's actually answer Maharu. Cause you know what we're gonna do. Don't pretend. You know. <laughs> this is what you're here for. <laughs> there, future. Everything went silent. Going back and rewatching this as I edited, which I know you don't know that I edit it because it doesn't look like I do, but I do. <laughs> Surprising. <laughs> uh but, you know, obviously this is, is not bad. Like, everything in the, in the sound shut down for just this decision. Which means this is the thing. Um, and it's give her an answer or put it off for now. Putting it off for, for now sounds like it's like... <laughs> like... I'm not- I'm, I'm just punting it down the road. I'm not, like, making things happen now. Which, sure, but you know, you're in divine selection. And she just said, I don't know if we can both survive this. And you're going to say, hey, let's punt this for now. And tempt you, I guess, into staying around? No. <laughs> the other one is give her an answer. We're gonna give her an answer. Huh? Oh, and there's a second choice. Hold on. <laughs> Save the choices. Save the choices! Okay. Except her. You can turn her down? Uh, you can turn her down? Oh, poor Maharu. Oh, poor Maharu here. But yeah, no, we're not turning her down. We're accepting her confession. Well, I'm fine with dating you. <laughs> All that for that. <laughs> that one line. I'm fine with dating you? Yeah, uh, that makes sense. I mean, not everyone will enter a relationship with someone at the same gender, even if they're proje- Wait, what? <laughs> Arinka, can you repeat that for me, please? I love you, uh, that's for sure. But I'm not certain if I'm in love with you, as it were. I mean, I've never experienced it before. If dating you helps me figure that out, then I'm down. Is that an acceptable answer? <laughs> she freezes up, her mouth almost hitting, a f hitting the floor. She looks like she wants to say something, but she can't find the words. In the end, she finally manages to croak out a coherent sentence. <laughs> yes! I'm so happy I could die. Not yet. Stay here. <laughs> She's smiling. Her face beat red. This isn't her usual smile, though, either. It's one she can't stop from spreading. That just reaffirms how cute she is to me. I can't help but match her smile, knowing that I'm about to begin a relationship with her. If anyone else saw me right now, they'd probably think I was a creeper. Uh, I'm gonna fall for her. <laughs> there you go! Right there! That's what I think at the time, at least. We walked back to the station that night, hand in hand. Why are we jumping ahead? Strolling through the nighttime scenery. Like this feels nice. It shouldn't look awkward for two girls to be holding hands. Still, I feel a little shy about it. Oh, you're holding hands! Ah! Why don't you give- Can we get a CG of them holding hands? Ah! I get ready for bed. Once back home. Way too much has happened today. <laughs> First to finish my finals, then Mal dragged this all out, and then I had to finally give Maharu an answer. And I've done it. <laughs> She's officially my first girlfriend. <laughs> Although, honestly, like, the writing in this makes it feel forced because 
she had such a good connection with Naomi, and Naomi obviously has feelings for her, so... Eh. <laughs> She's officially my first girlfriend. It's weird saying that when I've never ha even had a boyfriend. You don't need a boyfriend. <laughs> it's not weird. It's not weird in a bad way, though. <laughs> I'd be insulting Maharu if I thought it was. What's important is that this is how I really feel. I really should sleep for now. The store will be open for the first time in a while tomorrow, so I need to get up early. There's a lot to be done. I've messaged my grand as well, so all that's left is to shut my eyes. It's fortunate that the next election isn't the last. We still have a week to work things out if nothing comes from this one. As much as I want to finish the diary, I'm better off getting some rest. Fair. Do we get to see you guys as girlfriends for a while? That's great, if so, please. Mm, I'm morning already. Drag myself out of bed and stretch. I'm opening up a store for the first time in a while today. There's a lot of preparations to make, so the store's only going to be open from 9 to 4. Once ready to face the day, I make my way downstairs. To find... Maharu. Ah, pops into Lion House during the afternoon. Guess she's off work today. Kind of unusual considering it's a Saturday. Oh my god. She's so cute. When are you closing shop today? Around four. I figured that's only fair since I opened the store late. Okay, in that case, let's go on a date once you're done. Sure, no pro- Huh? A date? <laughs> I answer right away, but my brain has also a slight delay in processing what she's just said. She wants to go on a date. Uh, something couples normally do. Oh my god, yes, we get to see this! <laughs> what? <laughs> it's decided then, assuming you don't have any other plans. I've been itching to go to the aquarium, to be honest. The last time I went was back in elementary school. What is up with Yuri's and aquariums? What in the world is up with Yuri's and aquariums? Like, <laughs> bloom into you? This, there's a couple others that have like aquarium dates. Or, like, <sighs> does the fishes? No, we're not going there. There's one, <laughs> there's one about half an hour away by train. It's open till the evening. Let's meet there. Okay. <laughs> the blush. A single syllable is all I manage, thanks to my embarrassment. Somehow it's never really hit me that we're dating for real now. We held hot hands on the way back last night, but well, I, I was kind of going with the flow, I guess. I'm not even sure what the actual dating process is. <laughs> not like you'll study it. Mahari walks out while I'm caught up in my own thoughts. And she must be sitting there giggling at how adorable you are. It seems like where and when where and when we you meet is just as essential as the first date uh, on the for the first date as everything that comes after. My nerves and embarrassment make the next three hours of work a struggle to say the least. <laughs> she, hold on, she showed up at noon later that day at five. Make my way to meet Maharu once I've closed up shop. It's still pretty bright out during this time of July. Don't think I've been this nervous in my life. Also, is that your go-to outfit for anything? My thoughts spill out. It's amazing how the idea of this one date can get me so anxious when we've hung out countless times before. Last time I was at an aquarium was in elementary school as well. Now that I think about it, my grand took me to one pretty far out. I remember being amazed at the sight of the whale shark. I love whale sharks. They're really cool. They're fascinating. I, uh... Hmm... Thinking through fishes. Because this is relevant somehow. Uh... Because we had the Georgia Aquarium. I guess... 
you know, a lot of my experiences down south in Georgia, the Georgia Aquarium was where we had the kickoff party for Pride every year. And, like, it was a banger um, because it was, like, an open bar place, uh, open bar in the aquarium with dancing, which was quite a, mo- uh, quite a lot. I love penguins and otters, for sure. Hmm. I don't think there's a specific fish that, that I'm drawn to. Yeah. Anyways, side note with Dainty. The pattern on their back has been compared to that of a night sky filled with stars. Ooh, cool thought. Astrology, another queer thing. I remember thinking, thanks to that, the aquarium was kind of like space. Sort of association only a kid would make, really. I don't know. <laughs> kind of lesbian there. <laughs> but on the flip side, you can't be the oblivious lesbian anymore. Honestly, the planetarium is where I'd be. Um, also the, uh, National Air and Space Museum. Oh my god. I didn't get to see too much of the downtown version, but the, like, auxiliary place where they actually had the planes. Oh, I flipped. I cried. I was nuts over that. Bridges, planes, transportation. Yeah, it makes sense. (laughs) It might just be the ideal place for us to begin our new relationship, though. There we go, I was able to read the sentence. Good job, Dainty. <laughs> but yes, they're in a relationship and we actually get to see them on a date. This is great. I mean, my understanding of love is at about the same level as space. Win. Oh, oh my god, you're so cute. <laughs> oh my god. We enter the aquarium around six and leave just as it was about to close for the night. Ooh, you stayed there for a while. Also, that's a really tasty looking omelette beside you. It wasn't too big of a place, but the effort put into every display was remarkable enough that they kept our attention the whole way through. Holding hands the entire time was pretty embarrassing, but part of me stopped caring thanks to all the sea creatures. (laughs) You <laughs> got enthralled by all of the aquarium and just happily held hands with your girlfriend. Just just saying. Why don't we have a CG of this? <laughs> we should! We make our way to the nearby restaurant for some food afterwards. That was great, wasn't it, Rinka? <laughs> yeah. The jellyfish was pretty enough, but getting to see stuff floating around with them, like stingrays and manta rays, was nice. What do you have in front of you? You have, like, some fries? Didn't even realize there was uh, an aquarium there. It was the sort of place where kids, families, and adults alike could enjoy themselves. Apparently it's, um, a a popular date spot as well. (laughs) Yes. Nightscape from inside was beautiful too, so I can understand why. I spent more time watching you enjoying your si- yourself than I did the exhibits. You're just too cute. <laughs> the face! C- c- come on, are you trying to embarrass me now? She just says this stuff even when other people are within earshot. I shoved some of the lettuce wedges that came with my hamburger steak into my mouth to distract myself. Hamburger steak, eh? Chances are that was the exact sort of reaction she was hoping for, though. Oh yeah, she's totally needling to get you to blush. Despite knowing this, I can't stop myself. She's got me wrapped around her finger. She always has. (laughs) Are you planning to open the store tomorrow? She poses her question. Once we're done talking about the aquarium. Yep. What makes you ask? Oh, well... I was planning to stay over at your place tonight. Of course you are, Moharu. You you what? She stayed over before. Ugh. I want to go to the theme park tomorrow too, mainly because we're going to going next week. Mainly because going next week might not be the best idea when we've we will have the final round of divine selection looming over us. 
Well, it makes sense. She could stay at my place so we could get up nice and early for it. Suggestion came out of nowhere, but she's thought it all through. Yeah. <laughs> She'd probably take him tomorrow off work or ask someone to cover her shift, too. Not that she'd admit it to me. It's rare to see her have both days of the weekend off, so that's the only explanation I can think of. It hurts to admit, but I have no reason to be open the store if I don't want to right now. Every single day is precious now. Having acknowledged that I decided to take the day off myself. Good! That being said... I, I don't mind you staying over, but... It's a bit start too early for us to be doing you know that sort of stuff <laughs> the awkward is palatable Maharu blushes profoundly in response to my timid claim drawing her eyes away from me she follows up with one of her standard chuckles before whispering something to me I never expected you of all people to bring that up don't worry. Those things hadn't even crossed my mind. Uh huh. Wait a minute. So I'm the one with a questionable thought process, basically. <laughs> All I can do now is shovel more food in my mouth and choke as a result. <laughs> Once back home, we both shower and hop in the bed separately, might I add. <laughs> I doubt I'll be able to read the diary tomorrow at this rate. That's fine though, I'm not opposed to this. Spending time with Maharu is fun. Pure and simple. Maybe that's what dating entails? Just enjoying time spent with your partner. Good night, Rinka. Yeah. Good night, Maharu. We're waking up early. Fortunately, I'm able to fall Fast asleep thanks to my tired nerves from our date. Uh huh. And then Maharu would probably watch you sleep, sleep and go, Oh, she's so precious. Oh my god, she's so cute. <laughs> oh my god. And she packed like an extra hat and oh my god, I love her. Adorable sundresses. <laughs> Good night. <laughs> no, sorry. Good morning. Good morning. You should have slept like a log. Uh, morning. How come you're ready this early? Not only has she gotten dressed, but she also has her hair all done up as well. Seems like she woke up an entire hour before me, which means she barely got any sleep. Yeah, she probably just watched you. <laughs> she looks perfectly fine despite all that, though. I've never seen the outfit she has on before today, either. I don't want to distract you while you get ready, so I'll wait downstairs. Oh, oh, so considerate. You're so sweet. A thought comes to my mind as I watch her walk off. She's somehow more gorgeous than usual today. <laughs> oh, oh, a different outfit. Wow. Okay, so she's in a sundress, dress and you're in a skirt and hoodie. <laughs> How do I look? I make my way downstairs after getting ready. Although your choker is really cute with the heart. Seeing Mahari dressed up all nice makes me want to do the same. My clothes looked really cute when I bought them, but I never could find the courage to actually wear them till now. Stunning. She says this without reservation. I don't take such compliments very well, which causes me to look away from her out of embarrassment. I love the awkward dating! This is so good! Anyway, <laughs> we make our way to the station since we're both ready. Breakfast? Oh, nope, we're just right in the bark. Our destination is Stardust Kingdom. That fanfare. The same place we went in May. I was about to say, this is a throwback. Back then there were four of us, but now it's just Maharu and me. On our second date. Consecutively. 
it's pretty busy because today's Sunday, but it's not near as bad as it was during Golden Week. Helps that summer holidays haven't started yet. So what should we do first? I'll go wherever you want. Hmm. If anything, I'd rather follow you around for the day. Uh, really? Now I'm not too sure. She's probably memorized where all the attractions are and what events are going on today, so just like Lex said. That's why she should be able to plan out the most effective route based on where I, I would want to go. But I don't care about efficiency today. Last time we talked, we planned things out based on what all four of us wanted to do. So today, I'll be going anywhere you want. Oh, that's so cute. Alright. There are five things I want to try. Sit with you on a thrilling ride go, ride, go through the haunted house, watch the summer parade, buy matching souvenirs, and finally watch the nighttime parade with you. Much like we did last time. Not many people come to a not many people come to a theme park with only five things in mind, but okay, sounds good to me. <laughs> go with the flow, Rinka. I am determined to be proactive today, so I summon all my courage and grab Maharu's hand. <gasps> Yay! Oh, I love that she's like there. She's actively trying to reciprocate in this relationship. Ah! Uh, having done that, I gently pull her along toward the entrance. <laughs> oh wow! Flash. We successfully clear four. Of Maharu's goals right around right when 8 p.m. rolls around. I handle thrill rides pretty well, so I wanted to go on the second round of the free fall. Maharu didn't take it too well though, so I scrapped that idea. The haunted house was less about trying to scare you and more about letting you enjoy the concepts behind horror themed stuff. We managed to get in the front row of an afternoon parade. Amazingly enough, we got a bit wet since it had water spraying all over us, but the water the weather was warm enough that we dried off pretty quick. As for souvenirs, we got a pair of mugs with our names engraved on them. Oh. Mugs. You know, you always see like in um these Japanese series, uh the concept of like cell phone matching keychains there's so much pressure around cell phone keychains and i didn't know that but mugs all right <laughs> that's very solidly in your cabinet <laughs> needless to say we're both thrilled oh they are packed in one box so i'm in charge of carrying them it's an important duty if you ask me <gasps> it's so cute <laughs> All that's left now is the nighttime parade. Technically, that's where everything began. It probably began way before that, you just didn't understand it. <laughs> I learned last time that mainly couples come to watch it. That's fine though. We were part of the crowd this time. Thanks for coming today. I came because I wanted to. There's no need to thank me. Do you remember what happened last time? Of course. I stand right by Maharu and wait for the parade to begin. Things sure have changed since then, huh? <laughs> Becoming participants and divine selection was crazy enough, but who would have thought that we'd be the final two remaining? There's no coincidence. It's all due to your iron will. <laughs> yeah, I, I'd be insulting those who been eliminated if I denied that at this point. It's not just that, though. Your resolve helped to create the situation. I'd hope so. Thinking about you is what helped me reach this point. The fantastical scenery of the theme park also makes it feel like I'm dreaming. Though that might sound a bit ironic coming from someone who knows what the dream world looks like. I guess the biggest change of all is that we're dating now. It was your confession that helped me find confidence in myself. <laughs> Funny how that works, huh? <laughs> Quite. Especially when the same applies to me. 
You can never truly understand yourself without the help of others. I mean, they do give you quite the reflection back. A lot more data. And also they're good- it, it's good to be- yeah, n anyways. <laughs> Not just data. <laughs> I've gained a, a new whole- I've gained a new whole new okay, so that that that's not I've gained a whole new perspective through Maharu's feelings toward me. My outlook on the world has changed significantly after mere three days of being in a relationship with her. I'm sure the world's full of things that I still don't know. I mean, sitting beside Maharu right now is making my heart race, but I still don't know if that means I'm in love with her or not. Hey, Rinka. What's up? Oh, Wanna kiss? Uh. Then again, I already stole your lips when you were asleep last night. Oh! <laughs> what? I'm teasing you. I'd rather save my first kiss for when you're conscious. Please do. That's better. <laughs> but still, it's hilarious. The worst part is that I'm not convinced you're actually kidding. <laughs> Either way, we probably shouldn't right now if you- if I have to ask outright. I'm sure it'll happen naturally when the time feels right. My heart almost stopped for a minute. Kissing, in my mind, is, uh, well, a pretty advanced step in a relationship. It's a whole different ball game from holding hands. I'm not sure I can even make a comparison that, that represents the difference well enough. The illuminations around us finally fade, which signals the beginning of the parade. I feel Mahari's presence beside me the whole time, while making the experience all the better. Oh, So you don't kiss the girl. Why? <laughs> it's okay. I know there's a lot more going on. We leave the park around half an hour before its gates close. Maharu comes back to the line house with me to pick up her stuff. Have her sleep over. She left it all so she wouldn't have to drag it around the park. The vine selection is denied. The plan is for her to pick up her stuff and leave so we can both relax before it starts. Maharu has a stern look on her face as she's about to leave. I have a suggestion I'd like you to hear. About divine selection, I assume? Correct. I've been thinking about it all week, but today helped me to finally sort things out. If we want to try your previous suggestion, then tonight... May be our only chance. Why do you say that? Let's say you elect me and I protect myself. But Parsa voids the exchange. We still have an entire week to figure something else out if things come to that. Her proposition makes sense, so why not? I'd only been considering the possibilities of how Parsa would settle things if neither of us could elect one another myself. Stuff like the number of cards we have, how many cards we've acquired thus far, they can all become factors. It's entirely po possible that Parsa has the power to avoid an entire election too, considering her position. If the scenarios I've considered end up happening, the last thing we want is for it to become the final round. We could trap ourselves. In that case, today is the best day to try it out. Who knows? It might just cancel the entire ritual and force Parsa to return to her own world. It's not guaranteed, but the possibility is there. Okay, let's go with that. Thanks. I'll see you in the dream world then. Maharu leaves afterwards, looking satisfied. Wait. I forgot to give her the mug with her name on it. Oh, well, I'll give it to her at school tomorrow. Head up to my room with that thought in mind. Oh. Once in bed, I recall everything that happened since yesterday. 
I went on my first date with Maru to the aquarium. And we went to the theme park today. It's been a special weekend, to say the least. The idea that I'll have more experiences like this down the line makes me smile. I'm glad I gave her an answer. Good. It's only been two days since we started dating. I wonder what else we'll do from here on out. Meow. Hello, Lethe. Lethe sneaks into my room. I invite it to bed since I'm in a good mood, but it brushes me off. Turns around and makes its way back out of the room, but not before stopping to look back at me. Keeps its eyes locked on me for quite a while. Hmm. Hmm. Quarter feet. Of the 12 platforms present in the quarter feet, only two remain that participants are actually standing on. Maharu's and my own. Strange sense of sadness pervades the end. Endless dreamscape. As usual, as usual, Parsons' voice cuts straight through those sensations. Good evening, my little slaves to fate. Perhaps it's a little overdramatic when only two of you remain. Neither of us react to her comment, causing her to press on. Tonight serves as the penultimate round of divine selection which you will shoulder the burden of those who fell before you and become my vessel, I wonder. Well, neither of you seem intent on rushing things along. That is rather sad, I must admit. You had quite the rowdy crowd this time, compared to past the le selections. How many times has divine selection taken place up by this point. Hmm, I never did bother counting now that I think about it. Let's see, I believe this marks the twelfth. Imagine that. Fatal twelve. So much for not qu counting. Hold on, Maharu. <coughs> so much for not counting. Maharu sighs before speaking. There's a special meaning behind this being the twelfth time, though. I've always figured that the 12 weeks and 12 participants were just due to 12 being a good round number. Like how a year split into 12 months, a clock into 12 hours, and so on. It's a common phenomenon the world over. Seeing can't be sad after this revolution, though. It's too big of a coincidence for number 12 to recur this much. Then again, I'm not sure if 12 is a lot in this case, since I don't know how much time passes between every each selection period. Pardon me, I shouldn't indulge in too much chit-chat. Now that I think about it, something doesn't add up. Paris is always mindful of time passing during a, in the, during in this procedure. She never just lets the participants talk to, and she never just lets the participants talk till they're blue in the face. She always forces things forward eventually. Why would she do that if the place is supposedly cut off from a natural flow of time? Allow me to begin tonight's election. Person makes her announcement before I can ask about it, however. The clock at the center of the court of fate begins to move shortly after. We will have an election from you tonight, numeral one. I liked numeral two. Maharu. Oh ho! A hint of surprise washes over Parsa's face. It soon swirls into a wicked grin, albeit for just a moment. Perhaps she's realized what we're planning, as she knows we're friends. Here I was under the impression that neither of you would like the other. I do hope there are no unscrupulous plans behind this. Then again, holding doubts towards participants isn't part of my duty. Will you be uh, will you be electing her in response, numeral twelve two? Maharu, no. I won't. I make eye contact with Maharu. I was figuring she was good. Ah. 
She nods ever so slightly in response. Oh, she's going to defend herself. Oh, yeah. With that decided, numeral one and two, allow me to begin the election procedure. We've placed our bets. Our platforms begin to gradually ascend toward the upper, upper stratum. Here we go. Oh. <sighs> There's not much left to say at this point. Pick your cards, and I'll protect myself. Just like we planned. Yeah. Once we arrive, we go over things before Parsa appears. This whole ordeal might just come to an end right here. Although unlikely, the possibility does exist. All we need to do is make us both incapable of becoming Parsa's vessel. She won't be able to exist in the real world without one. She might be able to retain, remain within the court of fate, but honestly, I don't care what happens to her. What's important is ensuring that we both have a future. That's why we're doing this. Are you both ready? We've almost reached the grand conclusion, I must admit. I'm rather thrilled at the prospect. You still have an entire week after this to reach your final destination, although that seems to be of little concern to you. Well, the, well rather petite compared to numeral two, you may prove to be an appealing vessel nonetheless. I don't think you're in any position to judge my appearance. Goodness, you're not under the impression that your values apply to divine beings such as myself, are you? That'd be silly. I hit, I hit a nerve, didn't I? Knowing that Maharu is going to protect herself helps to keep me com composed. Parami does fear Parsa's reaction based on how pleased with this situation she is. We won't get anywhere without trying, though. Can we go get this over with already? Maru's on the same page as me. Parsa pouts for a moment, but she quickly adopts a grin instead. Do proceed, numeral one. I nod and flip open my card book. I pick out the three cards I need. It is an easy task. Her name is Hibanata Maharu. Her cause of death is suicide. Her regret is Shisama Rinka. I speed right through the election this time. Once I finish, Maharu opens her card book. I can't see too well thanks to the light, but I assume she's getting her cards ready as well. You've opened your own book, I see. Are you planning to defend yourself? Thanks, Rinka. Opening my card book should give us a few extra moments. Huh? Cold chill runs on my spine. I have no idea what she's implying. I mean, I do! I'm just trying to convince myself otherwise. There's no need, I, no way I can accept it. There's no way. Maharu! Taking our relationship a step further really made me happy. I'd be lying if I said I had no regrets, though. I told you, didn't I? My only goal is to ensure that you survive, even if it costs me my life. You've still got my cards, right? Come on, use them. My mind's a mess from this sudden change of events. I feel my emotions going wild. Why didn't you anticipate this? Why? I've done nothing but lie and keep things from you. Please, forgive me. I don't care about that. Just do what we planned to pick up my cards already. If you do, then... Let me be blunt. I want to ensure that you survive. No matter what. But I want you to live as well. <laughs> We've still got our whole future ahead of us. Oh... That's precisely why it's time for me to step down. I'm the one who chose to kill myself in the first place. I've never had any right to prior prioritize myself over the other participants. You said you forgave yourself. Yep, that was... I did. 
Oh, wait. No, hold on. Ah, clicking through. My bad. That was Rinka. You said you forgave yourself. I did. Then why? Oh my god. Oh my god. Hold on. 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 Sorry. We gotta scroll back. Uh. How do I scroll back? Oh my god. Not what I need right now. Okay, sorry. My. Uh. Mouse actually f it has a bad scroller and it's freaking out. So I grab my work mouse. So we're gonna close through. Boop boop boop. I can feel my emotions going wild. Please forgive me. Pick out your cards already. If you do that, then. Uh huh. Whole future. Here we go. Sadness. <sighs> Arr, I hate having to click back through this. Why, <sighs> mouse? I thought you you said you forgave yourself. I did. Then why? This is the answer I reached. I'm willing to die in order to change your fate. But you're wrong. That's not the answer I want to hear. I'm not. My love for you is how I reached my answer. You said that, <laughs> like, I don't feel the same. I knew for sure that I was about to fall in love for the first time in my life. Thanks, Rinka. It was obvious you felt that way, so I was satisfied. Don't be satisfied. We haven't even kissed yet. Facts. Rinka tell the truth. That's one of the reasons I said I'd be lying if I claimed to not have any regrets. Then she closes her card book, a sign that my plea has fallen on deaf, deaf ears. There's no pain or anguish in her expression. She offers only a sincere, beautiful smile. You understand the implications of closing your card book, right? Do you even need to ask me that? Wait, Maharu, I'm not. Rinka. Maharu! Farewell. No! Made my choice. Say so I won't pray that we. So I won't pray that we meet again. Knowing that the end was near made these three days we spent together all the more worthwhile. Don't do this! Don't leave me! The cards I chose began to move, as if my will has no further say in the matter. Try to reach out and snatch them back to no avail. Parsa, I'm begging you. Make it stop. At the very least, delay it until next week. It's okay, Rinka. You'll be the only one who knows about the three months we spent together. Following the start of all this. Just the idea that only you know certain sides to me makes me happy. <sighs> What's there to be happy about? My three cards make their way to the center of the Court of Fate. Once there, light pours forth from them. Oh. <sighs> Calling this place the dream world wouldn't make wouldn't couldn't be more appropriate. The time I spent with you until today really was a dream to me. So please live live your life to the fullest. No, don't. My overflowing emotions caused me to collapse onto my knees. There's no way for me to stop it. My heart is going to die again and there's nothing I can do to, uh, do about it. There are sides to you that only I know as well. I'm even thrilled that I have you all to myself right at this moment. I can't even see her through the light anymore. Oh. All sorts of special experiences await you from here on out. Should a time come when one of them surpasses what we had, then... E. Mara's voice fades as she spokes. I don't know what those meant. My mind grows cloudy following that. Oh no. 
The scene shifts to that of a lone girl. The type of person with the tenacity to beat themselves up in the face of any misfortune. This led to her desire for pain. A desire that never abated. She came to learn about the wickedness in people's hearts. The insatiable parasite known as jealousy. What's worse, she learned that she herself was a host for it. She decided to reject herself. Rejecting oneself while trapped in a mental prison was no simple task. It was something that could only be accomplished through death. Knowing this, she chose to put herself to rest. Her limp body and blood-drenched covers, reminiscent of a princess asleep on a bed, layered with flower petals. Whoa. So, what now? <laughs> Maharu. I'm unable to bring myself to my feet, even after returning to the lower sanctum. Maharu has been eliminated. I saw the moment of her death as a result. The same happened with you, Scale, and Alan. I elected all of them to keep my own life, and even did it to Maharu. I... I... Sacrifice what, what's most precious to me. <laughs> Person explodes into, into an evil grin. <laughs> what's so funny? I can't contain my anger. How dare she laugh in the face of what just happened? The sheer vigor from which I shout at her sends my tears flying off my face. <laughs> her laughter doesn't let up, though. It doesn't take long for me to realize that her evil grin is directed right toward me. <laughs> finally. Uh, the time has finally come. I've waited so long for this moment. For when I could finally claim you. She's a Marinka as my vessel. How else would you suggest that I express my joy over this? Fear begins to take hold. My every instinct screams at me that Parsa is dangerous. That fear, interwoven with my grief over losing Maharu, causes my entire body to convulse. Oh, perhaps you realize what's about to happen. Hardly surprising when we now effectively share the same body. What? I see no need to explain myself to someone who doesn't figure that much out themselves. What's important here is that my desire shall finally be fulfilled. Enough already. I've lost someone dear to me. I don't care anymore. Just tell me what you mean without any of your usual crap. Very well. Allow me to delve into my inner workings of divine selection ever so briefly. Thanks, TLDR. Giving into my own despair, I finally rise to my feet. Persa seems to interpret that as my intent to listen, which prompts her to continue. To be clear, divine selection is a ritual that can alter fate. It's the sole way to alter the paths you all faced. When whoever serves as my vessel loses their life, I twist the fate of all twelve people linked to them. This requires making use of the infinite worlds that exist, each based on the possibilities birthed from every choice ever made. <laughs> that was a lot. From those, I seek worlds where each of you have survived, and then string them together. So it's the many worlds thesis, and so there, she's basically creating little strings or wormholes connecting in and pulling in those different realities. This goes against the nature, natural order of things, causing a counterforce to activate in turn, which attempts to restore existence to normal. A, a, a counterforce? I can't help but question her terminology. I have to know. Why? Were we granted this glimmer of hope in the first place? Is it possible that it'll be ripped away from us by this counterforce? Perception plays a fundamental part of the world's structure. An apple is only an apple by nature of people seeing it 
as such. Should everyone kind of believe that apples are oranges, then every apple in the world would follow suit. In other words, your existence is only supported by someone's belief that you exist. Let's assume for a moment that the world's primary course is fixed and your death in it, in it is a certainty. Attaching, it, attaching to it a world in which you survive will result in a paradox. A paradox where you're alive despite being dead. The world would attempt to rid itself of this paradox by returning to its previous state. That is the counterforce. In other words, the fates strung in a to the primary course by force will attempt to return to their individual branches. Hmm. So what you're saying is, is there's a branch out there where Maharu's alive, right? Can't you shift us over to that one? I'm sure you're aware by this point, but that isn't possible. I am no absolute being with control over everything. What you are? What about shifting us to a world where only Maharu survives? Then it'd be that over. My apologies. I seem to have given you the a sliver of hope, but I'm afraid that two is not possible. The world in which Numeral Two is alive returned to its normal state the moment you eliminate her. As such, it has already distanced itself from this one. I currently lack the ability to bring back a world once it has split off. Maharu was your firmer, former vessel, right? She said that you even talked to her in her dreams. Don't you care or feel the slightest bit of sympathy for her? Those are feelings beyond my keen. I view my vessels as a means to remain in the real world. Nothing more, nothing less. I wish you'd get stuck here forever. That cannot happen, I'm afraid. Twelve weeks is my time limit when it comes to remaining here. And if you exceed that limit, the possibility of that happening no longer exists in this world. Thus, I see no reason then to divulge the answer to you. Not that you would understand it anyway. Persa takes one step toward me following that. My body has Stop shaking at this point, but one thing remains steadfast. I know for a fact she isn't human. She really is a goddess. Her piercing gaze alone is enough to make me freeze. What was the point in all this then? What is it that you made us do? Oh my god. Worry not. I'm about to show you the answer. First hand. I feel my world shaking with every step she takes toward me. Then, out of nowhere, the situation takes a sharp turn. What the? The court of fate begins to collapse following a tremor. Suddenly, I panic. I bound, I'm bound to get caught up in this so long as I'm here. I don't know how to leave the dream world on my own, though. There's nothing to fear, my dear. The crumbling world soon begins to light up. And the light gradually gar gathers around Parsa. The Court of Fate is a system designed to gather the collective existence of you humans. A somewhat simple description, but I doubt you would understand if I put it any other way. When a participant is eliminated, only the, the acknowledgement of their prior death remains in their original world. Their feelings and what they experience during divine selection. Do not. Indeed, they become fragments that are incorporated into the world, uh, Court of Fate itself. Hence why I would address you all as slaves to fate. You, however, are no longer a slave. You have earned the right to become my vessel. Parsa shows no concern for the world collapsing around her. The light grows stronger and stronger with every step that brings her ever closer to me. There's little I could do besides remain motionless, unable to understand anything that's going on. I have nowhere to run when I'm stuck on this small platform. My only choice is to watch as she approaches. My dreams of those eleven shall now become the foundation of my power. 
Using this power, I will perform a miracle. One that allows me to exist in the real world. That's your reason for giving us hope. There's no different. That's no different from toying with us. Everyone before me was nothing but stepping stone for your own sake. And? Is there some sort of issue with that? You're a heinous monster. I have no reservations in calling her that. Sorry, Gran. There's no two ways about it. I hate the being before me with every fiber of my existence. Fine. Just do your thing. I'll be able to curse you forever as long as you're a part of me. Parsa extends her hand out to me. Her palm is so tiny. Her shoulder so slender. They seem like they'll snap just by touching me. I send my own hand. No response. Parsa doesn't take mine in hers, though. Her hand goes straight toward my chest. After making contact, it sinks into my body. In this moment, I witness her merging into my own body. The light surrounding her envelops me. Upon closing my eyes, I see a number of dreams. I'm not sure if I'm remembering them or if the light is responsible. Chan and Ro, who were eliminated without me ever knowing anything about them. I'm sure they had their own desires in the face of the brief hope they were given. Kikyo, who entrusted her feelings for her child to me. I'm sure she and her husband shared those feelings. Hence why the letter was never needed in the first place when naming it. I'm so sorry, Sonya. You wish for your, our happiness from the bottom of, my, of your heart, but I'm the only one who survived. I promise I'll show Pezir more of the world, for your sake at least. Shikasuku, you loved you as if he were your own grandson. Our time together was brief, and though I never really came to like him, I can't say I hated him. He had his own convictions in all this, not to mention the things he wanted you to learn. As for you, I can never forgive him for killing Naomi. The despair he went through is something I cannot let myself forget, though. It, was, it represents the tragedies happening all over the world. His regret represented his desire to live a normal, simple life, similar to my own, yet with a much heavier weight to it. He simply wanted to that which he never had. So I can't hate him, despite what he did. A debt whose strength never ceased to amaze me. She had accepted her fate, I'm certain. Death is simply the end result of life, after all. Her resolve is to not look back is what allowed her to live on her own terms. It can't condemn Scale for his atta attachment to life. That's why my only option was to eliminate him by my own will. I may not have been able to condemn him, but I could never see eye to eye with him. I only ever met Federico in the world, world once, but his realization that we had been victorious left him shivering with joy. I'm not too sure about his life and how it played out, but I have no doubt that, to him, it was worth it in the end. Alan, whose sister I resembled, his way of life was something I could never accomplish. That was precisely why I thought he was incredible. And Maharu, who taught me more than about who I was than anybody else. I don't know much about being in love, but her confession was no doubt a turning point for me. Once so major, it changed my entire outlook on how to live. Maharu. Maharu. Grief overwhelms me once more now that Parsa's done with her explanation. This is different from what happened with Naomi. Maharu won't come back, <laughs> no matter what I do. I know that I'm going to feel even worse than I do now when I wake up in the real world. Even so... I need to live on. I'll live my life to its absolute fullest. Oh, but I'm afraid that won't be possible. Hehehe. <laughs> the voice rings out. An incredibly annoying voice at that. I stressed how important it was to me that you became my vessel, did it not? Let me share why. The voice gradually becomes more distant. I already know. 
and so I can claim your body as my own. Of course. I know, because... I've been longing for you ever since you met Numeral 2. Your meeting her was as much of a miracle for me as it was for her. Ensuring that you two remained bound together following that was a simple feat. Your fates had already been entwined, after all. Imagine the spiral in which you both served as the primary components, drawing yourselves toward one another. <laughs> I finally gasp at my own consciousness. Parts of speech is a bit fuzzy, but I can more or less understand her. This has to be a different process from what she did with Maharu. Your very birth was the result of fate being twisted. You may not have realized it, but a sliver of the power accessible to my vessels already flowed within you. That's why both your mind and body share the same ex uh, essence as mine. Allow me to show you the product of a true miracle, one that was impossible with any other participant. Then again, I doubt you, you'll be conscious by that point. If I had to describe what I'm experiencing right now, I'd liken it to having my ins insides thrown into a blender. The foreign object whirling around within me makes me want to throw up. If my understanding is correct, then she has one thing in mind. She wants to take control of my body. That theory soon becomes conviction. I shall become a resident of the real world through your body. She really is trying to take control of me. But I have no special powers of my own to speak of. There's nothing I can do to stop her. Even so, I can't sit by and let someone wrest my own body from me. Not even Minharu was robbed of this. I won't let you have your way. I know my body is being taken over, and yet I'm, and the, I'm able to remain defiant. It doesn't change anything, though. Parsis, it will eventually overtakes my own. Oh my god. Hi friends! Surprise Dainty Tank at the end of this. I had to break up this episode. It got really long, but the good news is I already have it edited and it's going to go out next time. So, we are so close to the end. So close! I am very sorry about that cliffhanger that I left you in last time. I apologize. I see you F that B dot. I'm sorry. <laughs> But, it's okay. We're close. We're very close to the end. That's why I have to cut it. Much like how Heart of the Woods ended. So, we are close. Stick around. See you next time. I love you all. And I'll see you next time. Bye!